Good evening, everyone. I'm Rich Medina, your council president. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Today is Monday, October the 8th, the year 2018. Let us all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk Santos, roll call of attendance. Maldonado. Present. Francisci. Present. Walker. Present. Vasquez. Present. Garcia. Present. Orange. Present. Perez. Present. Monroe. Present. Medina. Present. First item on the agenda. M minutes of the council meeting uh, on September 24, 2018. So moved, Mr. President. Second. Motion on the floor by Councilman Garcia, properly seconded by Councilman Monroe. To hear the minutes for Monday, September the 24th, year 2018. Any questions on that motion? Roll call. Maldonado? Abstain. Francisci? Abstain. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Abstain. Perez? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Medina? Yes. And motion carries. Next item. Communication from the mayor's office. Are none, Mr. President. And we have communications from department heads. Account payable warrant 100818BD, 100818CC, and 100818 Alley. So moved. Second. Motion on the floor by Councilwoman Orange. Properly second by Councilwoman Walker. To hear the three listed account payable warrants. Any questions on these warrants? Roll call to accept account payable warrants listed on today's agenda. Maldonado? Yes. Francisci? Yes. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Perez? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Medina? <clears throat> yes. Motion carries. Next item. Payroll warrant by weekly 092118 and payroll warrant monthly 01. Zero zero one one eight. So move, Mr. President. Second. <clears throat> Motion on the floor by Councilman Francisci, properly second by Councilman Monroe. To hear payroll bi weekly and payroll monthly. Any questions on this motion? Clerk Santos, Roca. Maldonado? Yes. Francisci? Yes. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Perez? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Medina? Yes. Motion carries. Do we have any committee reports? No committee reports. Do we have any board reports? No board reports. <clears throat> Clerk Santos, next item. Ordinance on first reading, ordinance 18-0018, sponsored Mayor Anthony Copeland, salary ordinance for appointed officers and employees of the city of East Chicago. So moved in first and second reading. Second, Mr. President. Motion on the floor by Councilwoman Orange, properly second by Councilman Garcia to hear on first and second reading. Ordinance number 18-0018. Questions on the motion? Councilman Garcia. Yes. Uh, is anybody here to talk about it? Good evening. 
Sandra Favela, Chief of Staff, Mayor's Office. I have here next to me our new HR Director, Human Resources, Laura Corpus. So we're here to speak on the Sally Ordinance, if you have any questions. Uh, any changes from last year? Yes, there are. There are 20, 22 changes to allow for the 3% increase that they gave at the beginning of the year so that they all the people fall within those ranges. That was one change. Uh, we also changed, uh, we lowered one biweekly low range for the Rehabilitation Program Administrator. And in addition to that, we increased all of the low ranges for the hourly positions to bring them up to the $13 minimum rate. I should point out though on page seven there needs to be a correction. On page seven, the community service officer, the second job from the top, should have been changed to $13 as well. You said 15 what? $13. The, on page seven, the second job from the top, community services officer, it should go from 1133 to $13 to bring everything up to the minimum wage. Any other changes? And no nor other increases besides uh, that? Right. Okay. Also, the other question I got, I see longevity pay here. And this was, if you was hired before January 1st, 2014, well, anybody after January 1st, uh, 2014, don't receive that, correct? The longevity pay? Correct. On page nine? So yes. When did the, the and I'm just trying to tie the longevity pay. When did the police and fire stop their longevity pay? Was that in 2010? I don't know offhand. I have to get back with you. Val, you remember? Was it 2014 or bef before 2014? I believe it's 14. I believe it was before. <clears throat> I can get back with you. Right. And also, just in the future, any changes, if you could mark it in red, that'll help us out. So, okay. uh, that helps us out tremendously. So, um, will do. How will we handle that in uh, changing page seven there? We need a, we'll need a motion to amend from the, from the floor. Mr. President, I'll make a motion that we amend um, page seven. Motion to pay, uh, change page seven, community service officer from 11 uh, 33 to uh, $13 an hour. A second. Motion on the floor by Councilman Garcia, probably second by Councilwoman Orange, to amend page seven of the salary ordinance 18 0018. Any questions on that motion? Clerk Santos, roll call to amend. Baldonado? Yes. Franciski? Yes. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Perez? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Medina? Yes. <coughs> Councilwoman Orange? I just have a question. Now, there was no other changes. I know he asked you if there had been changes from last year, but there's no other legal changes in the draft, right? No, I didn't believe there's any changes. No in changes on the first or anything that legal from section one to section nine. There's no changes okay. other than the, the year. And then uh, the positions, there were 22 positions in the salary side that were increased that were affected with that 3% increase last year. So those people who fell under the 3% in the high range of last year's or ordinance, we had to increase that by 3%. Those were 22 positions that were affected. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it was nothing on the here that needed to be changed because we don't want to be coming back after the budget passes and you guys say, oh, oh we've got to change this. Sure. Councilman Garcia? Yes, because um, you also, in the Senate ordinance, you also got the uh, employee handbook in here. Any changes to the employee handbook? Not at this time, no. None at all? No. Any further questions? 
In the event that we did have any changes, we certainly bring it back to the council to review. Any further questions? Thank you, ladies. <clears throat> Clerk Santos, roll call to accept in its amended version, Ordinance 18-0018. Maldonado? Yes. Francisco? Yes. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? <clears throat> yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Perez? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Medina? Yes. Motion carries. Next item. Ordinance on second reading, Ordinance 18-0017, sponsor Mayor Anthony Copeland, an ordinance to amend and restate the City of East Chicago sewer user ordinance and regulations. So move, Mr. President. Second. Motion on the floor by Councilman Garcia, properly second by Councilman Monroe. To hear Ordinance 18-0017 on second reading. Any questions? Councilman Garcia. Uh, I know we talked about it last time. Uh, just to, uh, we had quite a few missing um, council people. But uh, this is, was an ordinance with the sewer user ordinance. Uh, the treatment plant reference, when we get water from the companies, they have to treat it before they release it back. Uh, but one of the things that raised concern with me was arsenic and some other stuff that, that comes in from these companies that we got to treat that water and that water is released back into the Grand Calumet, which uh, is a concern for me. Um, there's two companies that have their own treatment um, facility, which is BP Amico and Mattel, uh, which is not regulated by us, um, but I think it's something that we have to be um, – vigilant on, uh, maybe the public safety uh, uh, could come up with some uh, because we don't, any, anytime they break the rules, we don't know. Um, they only get a, a $2,500 fine uh, when they break the rules, but we don't know. Um, but it's regulated by the by federal and state law, but I think we need to take a more look at it. Uh, everything that's going on in our city, where reference the lead situation in Calumet. Um, here we got them dredging the canal, and here we're releasing stuff that's treated and released back into the canal. Yeah. Um, and we don't need to go down that road again. So I just want to make that statement. Any further questions? Councilwoman Orange. Uh, this is a question for uh, Attorney Bishimi. Okay, so uh, Councilman Garcia does bring up a good point uh, because you got the big industries and whatever they find them is, is nothing really. They don't really care. They get fined and go on. How is it possible that the city could regulate that? Is it can we require test some type of testing or can you regulate it? Since they're regulated by state and federal. Are you referring to any discharge by Arsenal Middle and BPM? Right. That's Those two specific industries. Or any industries that, that's um, dumping and in back into the, uh, the little canal, the little Calumet uh, Canal there. For, for the other industries other than BP, Amico, and Arsenal Middle, uh, they are regulated by the terms of this ordinance that you have under consideration. And the city has authority to impose fines for illegal discharges. With respect to the two large industries, it's my understanding that they're regulated by the Indiana Department of Environmental Management, and that's the primary enforcement agency. That doesn't prevent the city sanitary district, though, from working with the Indiana Department of Environmental Management with respect to enforcement measures if there are illegal discharges in, into the Calumet River. Councilman Garcia. Yeah, um, Mr. President, if you could have maybe uh, the people that explained it from the sanitary district to come back for third and final reading, because I'm pretty sure the rest of the council might have other questions. Because I think um, what he they said that they go out and test some of these sites, um, but um, as far as regulating BPA and Mattel, they probably have more insight. That primary person would be Kenneth Myers. The 
Sanitary District Compliance Manager, who was here at the uh, meeting on September 20th. Correct. Mr. President, if you can invite him for the third and final reading, I think that will be a... I, I, I agree with you. Alita, can we send him a letter? Thank you. Do we have any further questions? Clerk Santos, roll call to accept reading ordinance 18-0017. Maldonado? Yes. Francisci? Yes. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Perez? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Medina? Yes. That motion carries. Next item. Ordinance on third reading. Ordinance 18 0015. Sponsor Mayor Anthony Copeland. East Chicago Sanitary Budget 2019. So moved, Mr. President. Second. Motion on the floor by Councilman Garcia. Properly second by Councilwoman Maldonado to hear. Ordinance on third reading 18 0015. Any questions on the motion? Roll call to accept on third and final ordinance 18 0015. Maldonado? Yes. Francisci? Yes. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Perez? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Medina? Yes. That motion carries. Next item. Ordinance 18-0016, sponsor Mayor Anthony Copeland, East Chicago Civil City Budget 2019. So, so moved. Mr. President. Second. Motion on the floor by Councilwoman Vasquez. Properly second by Councilman Monroe. You're here on third and final reading, ordinance number 18-0016. Questions on that motion? Clerk Santos, roll call to hear on third and final, ordinance 18 0016. Maldonado? Yes. Francisci? Yes. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Perez? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Medina? Yes. The motion carries. Next item? We have no resolutions, Mr. President. Okay, we'll open the floor to old business. Do we have any old business? Councilman Garcia? Yeah, Attorney uh, Buscemi and Steve Dalton. Um, reference, uh, I give you a copy of the ordinance uh, for Michigan City for Fire and Police. Um, as you've seen, that was done with the mayor and also with the council. Uh, can the council get into a contract with the uh, fire and police? Yes, in my legal opinion, it's appropriate for the city council, if it wishes to do so, to be involved in negotiations for a collective bargaining agreement and also to be involved in drafting and writing an agreement. Uh, and the reason for that legal opinion is the legislative body is the body that is duly empowered with funding pay and benefits that are part of collective bargaining agreements and as Councilman Garcia correctly pointed out just a moment ago, uh, the city of East Chicago, the city of Whiting, there are four or five communities where the city council or the town council, if it's a town, are co-parties along with the executive branch, along with the mayor to the collective bargaining agreement. So city council has in my opinion, whatever rule it desires to play in that process. Any further old business? Councilman Garcia. Uh, the other thing that I uh, talked to Mr. Buscemi, Attorney Buscemi, was public access. He sent me an email today. Um, he stated there was an ordinance in 03 that governs it. Um, it's supposed to be an established board for uh, public access, uh, but there's no board. Um, can you speak more on that, Mr. Buscemi? Yes. Uh, the council enacted an ordinance that reorganized, back in 2003, that reorganized city government and reorganized all of the departments of city government. 
and uh, that ordinance specifically enumerates which specific departments and all the council members go. There's a long list of executive departments are uh, authorized by the ordinance and the ordinance provides certain terms and conditions to be met in each department. One of the departments that was created in the 2003 ordinance was the uh, cable television uh, programming, actually the it was the uh, city communications and media department, part of which, under which, was included the operations of the city uh, cable television government access channel. And in that ordinance, the council members provided for the creation and appointment of a board, a cable television board. However, the administration recently has informed me that although the board was created and it is authorized by ordinance, there was never any appointments made. So at the present time, there are no individuals serving on that board. Um, Mr. Bubashimi, can you give us all the council members, you can have any emails, a copy of that ordinance? I can. Um, the reason I asked Mr. Bushimi um, to look into it, um, trying to give us all the opportunity to have uh, access to that public access channel. Um, so that's why I had him look into it. Um, what do you think we need to, uh, to get that established, or do we need to rewrite that ordinance? In my opinion, I think uh, there probably needs to be a minor rewrite because there's a couple items that should be more specific about the board. The ordinance says a board is created, however, it doesn't have the basics of the board. It does not have the number of members of the board. Is it a three-person board, for example, a five-person board? It also doesn't, the ordinance doesn't designate who the appointing, well, you know, it, I stand corrected. It does provide that the city council is the appointing authority for the members of the board. A second thing besides the number of board members that is lacking is the length of the term of the board members. So a minor rewrite of the ordinance would be helpful with respect to the board. And then at the same time, uh, if the council is interested in uh, sharing the access to the programming, that could be included in that same ordinance. I look forward to working on that with you. Councilman Garcia, I, I, I believe we should have a committee to oversee that. If you'd like to chair that uh, standing committee. Sure. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, and we'll call it the Public Access Committee. And if we get any volunteers, we could we could have three members of the council, Councilman Monroe. Anyone else? Councilwoman Maldonado. Great. Mr. President, yes. if I, if I make, may make a suggestion, as opposed to public access, I think a more, I think we're talking, are we not, about the cable television programming? Correct. I think a more appropriate name for the committee would be cable television. I'll second that. Any further old business? <clears throat> Floor is now open to new business. Do we have any new business? Moving to public expression. Clerk Santos, do we have any public comment cards? Yeah. No, Mr. President, I don't have them. Yeah, she, she just come in. If you if you sign a form, sure. Over there. You go ahead and speak, and then you could. Thank you. You could fill out the form. Good evening to all you. of you. Most of you I know. My name is Deborah Williams. I live at 2114 Cardinal Drive, East Chicago, Indiana, and I am one of the members of the Top 20 Dance Group with Mildred Ball. Uh, we brought it back seven years ago, and we are currently still doing all we can to provide um, creative activity to our students. We will be having an, a fundraiser on October 27th, and we're hoping that we can receive sponsorship from our, our own city council. That's why I came. I wanted to present some information. So you know, we served just about 200 students last year, including June 
the, um, as soon as school came out, we have performed. We take students on field trips. We provide mentoring activities. And they learn different genres of dance, be it modern, be it jazz, be it contemporary, be it uh, ballet. We have uh, Monday through Thursday. Last year, I killed myself. Went to all the schools. But we're going to be at Kerry Gosh, just Kerry Gosh. And the schools will come to us. And so you know, just as our council represents who we are here in East Chicago, our students represent who we are, be they Hispanic, Mexican, Puerto Rican, Dominican, be they African American, be they Caucasian. So all of them from all the families representing East Chicago attend. Have a great time. Uh, Mildred Ball is still kicking. She just left. Um, she's hoping that she gets to see some of you and the council represented at our event October 27th at the Ameristar. I have information for each of you. Any questions? This is not a question and answer forum, however, thank you. Any further, uh, Councilman Garcia? Yeah, I, I just forgot one thing. Uh, I asked uh, Marino to come at our next meeting, give us a presentation. Apparently, there's a, a bike trail that's going up on Columbus Drive. Um, I, didn't, I don't think we had any information on it. So I asked them, uh, I'm going to ask William to come to the, get us a presentation on that uh, at our next meeting. Great. Uh, Clerk Santos, any more comment cards? No, Mr. President. The chair will now accept the motion to adjourn. So move second. Roll call to adjourn. Aldenado? Francisci? Yes. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. yes. Garcia? <laughs> I don't know what's going Garcia. on. Garcia. Garcia? Yes. Garcia. Yes. Also Orange. Okay, hostile. Uh, Orange. Uh, Orange. Uh, yes. <laughs> Perez? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Medina? Yes. Meeting is adjourned.